to explain Branch, you kind of have to explain the whole world that the trolls live in, which is a very happy, go lucky, singing, dancing, uh, overjoyous, um, ecstatic, I could go on and on, uh, type of world. And Branch is a little more of the outcast. And uh, he doesn't sing, he doesn't dance. Um, he's he's um, constantly cautious uh, because, and in the movie, funny enough, warns uh, Anna's character, Poppy, that if they continue to keep singing and dancing and making so much noise, they're going to attract the Bergens, which are, you know, life-size sort of uh, villains in this movie. And uh, they, they happen to eat the trolls uh, because it makes them happy uh, when they eat them. I think Branch is probably closest to Poppy other than any other of the other trolls. Uh, but mostly because Poppy is, is pretty persistent and uh, trying to always cheer him up and, and, uh, and their, you know, their relationship throughout the movie is, is fun to watch. It's, there's a lot of humor between the two of them because they're so opposite. Um, and uh, even though Poppy is, you know, constantly um, so, you know, overjoyed. She, she has her fair share of, of ribbing Branch, too. So there's kind of a little flirtation, I think, that goes on between the two of them. I'm annoyingly happy to Branch, you know, specifically to Branch. I mean, you know, I think he finds all of, you know, just being so happy all the time. I mean, he says to her, you know, life's not always cupcakes and rainbows. You know, bad things happen and, and um, it's, it's it, like I said, it's fun to watch those two offer each other a different perspective and for her to learn that and for him to learn that it's okay to find the good in, in everything. When they first showed me what Branch looked like, it was in comparison to Poppy and she's like pink and, 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 and so vivid and Branch is like kind of like, even the color's dismal. Um, and for me, I just thought, oh, this is going to be so much fun to play this sort of like sarcastic, you know, slightly pessimistic uh, or very pessimistic character because I don't get to do that a lot. The thing that tripped me out was how much texture there is in the animation. I remember them saying that like, yeah, we found, you know, some new code to give new texture to the animation and then you see the actual hair on the trolls and it looks like unbelievable uh, when you see it fully done so um, I actually can't wait to put 3D glasses on and see it like that. Famously since the creation of these you know sort of mythical creatures the trolls their hair has always been uh, a big part of it I think and um, I don't know why, but but it definitely for for our movie, I think it serves as, you know, it's 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 such a it's such a big part of 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 who they are. You know, they're able to the the fact that the that the directors and the animators were able to come up with them being able to use it as an extension of their of their bodies. It was it's pretty it's a pretty ingenious uh, move. Even though they're so they're so different, they they for me it was kind of um it was a little bit of a cheat code because they were informing each other for me, because I could create music that because I got to see so much of everyone's character to create music for certain scenes, um, so I could really play up on that and be inclusive of of all of those you know little idiosyncratic things that each you know actor's character has um, and and then to jump back in and do you know the voice as I'm as I'm sort of uh, creating the music it informs you of how because my character doesn't sing and doesn't dance it informs you how you can you know I was able to actually create you know a little bit of dialogue that plays up on on that and I probably wouldn't have had that instinct if I wouldn't have been working on the, all the music at the same time. To work with uh, 
such great people who are who are great you know um, actors, great performers um, as far as acting goes. But then to have the other side of them having such great musical ability and great voices, it, it definitely makes your job as the music producer a lot easier because you got to go in and cut all these vocals, and if they don't sound good, you got to figure out a way to 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 make them sound better. And I I. I didn't have to do any of that. I mean, everybody just came in and crushed their parts, their singing parts. Doing voice work for an animated film, you, you constantly get to chip away at it and go back and revise it. And you don't have that luxury when you're making a, you know, a, a live action film. And, um, and to be involved with the music, you know, as I kind of alluded to before, to work with the directors on that and for them to have their ideas, it just, it's a constant reminder of the world that you're trying to create. And, you know, the music has to be a part of that. It has to be um, special to that world. And, and, and I think it all informs, it all just informs, uh, they all inform each other. You know, there's a whole team of, of people that are contributing, and it's nice to have because you get the director's point of view and you get the producer's point of view. You get the music supervisor who has to go out and clear these songs um, and make great suggestions for, for songs that work in, in, in a scene. And every once in a while, you come across something like True Colors that is such an amazing song, and what it stands for in the world is such an amazing thing at the time the song came out. And, and then to have it literally mean something in our movie, um, it's, again, it's, it's, it becomes a no-brainer. Like, there, there's no other song that will work in this scene. So I think what you do is you go, okay, sonically, what's happening? You know, is this, is this an intimate performance? Is this a big production-style performance? Um, and then you just you try, to, you try to acoustically accompany the moment. I think the message of this film is um, that that you know finding your inner happiness uh, it really is a choice that it's there for you to choose to have and and um, I think it's fun for me to be the character that kind of gets to have that transformation in the movie um, um, to to. To, to be one of the characters that has that transformation in the movie. You know, I think this movie is about, you know, finding your inner happiness and that that, that, doesn't, um, that doesn't and shouldn't depend on anything that's external. It's a animated, modern, musical adventure, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and it's, and it's a comedy, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's kind of like, I think it's everything you'd want in, in a family film. You know, you, you get the adventure side, there's, there's a ton of action in it, there's a ton of humor. And again, that, that humor that I think DreamWorks has basically sort of copywritten, which is there's the jokes that only the dads get and the moms get, and then there's jokes for the kids. And, and also too, it's just got a great message. Um, and, and so I don't know what, what, what more you could ask for. Hi, here's an interesting movie fact for you. Each frame of the CGI scenes in Jane Cameron's Avatar, 1 24th of a second, took an average of 47 hours to render. Can you believe it? For this and more movie facts, click on more videos. But if you want something else, click on the playlist. <laughs>